so this is case scenario for today wherein a patient with type 2 diabetes mellitus is admitted with sub acute intestinal obstruction he is advised tpn tpn meaning total parenteral nutrition he is already on 30 units of premixed insulin in the morning and 15 units in the evening how will you manage his glycemia so this is the only case for today out of which uh, can we have the next slide please i hope everybody has read this slide properly can we have the previous slide please so this is a case scenario which is showing that a diabetic person is coming uh, to your hospital with subacute intestinal obstruction and then he is being advised total parenteral nutrition and what history is giving is his chronic diabetes is already on 30 units of premixed insulin which he takes uh, in the morning and 15 units in the evening so uh, my main question from this case scenario is what would you like to go for would you like to uh, undergo the glycemic control of this patient or first you want to correct his subacute intestinal obstruction so this is basically a very easy question you can pour your answers in the chat box Please write it on the chat box. We'll be taking the answers from there. The case scenario is given. A patient with type 2 diabetes mellitus is admitted with subacute intestinal obstruction. He is advised for TPN. He is on 30 units of pre-mixed insulin in the morning and 15 units in the evening. How will you manage the glycemia? Please write it on the chat box. Okay, we have the answer. Uh, short-acting insulin. Is it short-acting insulin, doctor? So Dr. I have a specific question. My basic question was a critically ill patient who is having this subacute intestinal obstruction is coming to your hospital and he has deranged glycemic level. So what you want to do, uh, you want to correct his um, subacute intestinal obstruction, you want to undergo glycemic control. So Dr. Hafsa has written increase insulin. Dr. Raghavi, intravenous insulin, Dr. Gopi, sliding scale, and Dr. Pratipal, uh, first relief obstruction, it's an emergency. Last, uh, last chat, Bob, uh, what is the name of the doctor? Yes, so uh, Dr. Pratipal. You need to first uh, go for subacute intestinal obstruction. As in my previous webinar in uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, also I have mentioned the same thing. Rather than rushing for the glycemic control, even in case of emergencies like DK, we first go for the fluid resuscitation of the patient and next step is the glycemic control. Can we have the next slide, please? So we have Dr. Manan here uh, writing glycemic control should be the priority. Dr. Sharad, insulin as well sliding scale. Dr. Arun, my father-in-law and mother-in-law both are having a prox. Okay, this is a question. So, uh, Dr. Mohammed, subacute intestinal obstruction first and then glycemia followed by. And Dr. Ramya, insulin sliding scale is adjusted. Uh, so, mostly I can see the treatment part. Okay, can we have the next slide, please, to make it easier for all the doctors to... Uh, and Dr. Zeba has written, first control subacute obstruction, get serum uh, glucose done. Right. So let's begin with the question answer round. The first is a general question, uh, which I would like to know from you. What are the basic indications for hospitalization of diabetic patient out of this following options? So there is accept word so can you please find the odd uh, odd option out indication so for hospitalization for hospitalization in uh, what condition you want to hospitalize you cannot hospitalize every diabetic patient right so what are the basic indications how you will decide which diabetic patient to hospitalize and which not 
So which is the odd one now? Okay, I can see the option B. Yes, doctor. Uh, B and Dr. Nurul has said uh, D. Mohammed has said A. Dr. Amar Singh has said first street interaction, then glycemic control. Dr. Vinil A. Dr. Nandita has written option B. Dr. Nagaraju has written option A. Okay. Dr. Sheila has written option D. Dr. Pritpal has written A. Tirup, Dr. Tirupati has written B. Dr. Janibala has written B. So I think uh, most of the options are B and B. Maximum are B. Okay, so should I tell the right answer? Dr. Mayank has written B. So I think maximum is B, doctor. Okay, Dr. Sahana has written A and B. A, a and D, sorry. So there is no option like A and B. Dr. Raghavi has written option C. Okay. Um, Dr. Kiran has written none of the above. Dr. Arun has written D. Dr. Hafsa has written option A. Then Hari, Hari Sundan has also written option E, none of the above. Dr. Bamini has also written option E. So we are getting um, now a lot of option E, none of the above. So that's the right answer. It's none of the above because when a diabetic patient comes to you, the indication that they need hospitalization, they can be uh, all the, ideally all the newly diagnosed diabetes, uh, which are encountered in children and adolescents, they need hospitalization. Any acute metabolic conditions, be it uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state or any uh, kind of hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, all these acute metabolic complications, um, also be it micro or macrovascular complications, they all need the hospitalization. Then uh, related to insulin, uh, if the patient uh, wants insulin pump initiation or uh, you have to uh, undergo institution of insulin pump therapy or any other uh, intensive insulin regimens that are to be started, these all need hospitalization. Apart from this, any newly diagnosed diabetes that require insulin during pregnancy or any uh, pregnant state like uh, gestational diabetes mellitus, if it is uncontrolled, both of these conditions in pregnancy, these require hospitalization. So uh, all the options enlisted are true and the exception is none of the above. So E is the right answer. So by now we know ki, uh, which type of diabetic patient uh, approaching you need hospitalization, right? So uh, can we have the next slide, please? Now my next question is, there must be one uh, glycemic target for a patient. Uh, which are hospitalized. Okay, so uh, my next question is, what is the target blood glucose in such critically ill patient? Is it less than 160 milligram per deciliter, less than 140 milligram per deciliter, less than 150 milligram per deciliter, or is it less than 180 milligram per deciliter? So Dr. Deepa, Dr. Sharad, Dr. Nurul, and Dr. Trupti has, and Dr. Hafsa, everybody, Dr. Ramya has written D, option D. Dr. Mohammed has written option B. Then maximum we are getting for D. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Raghavi has written option D. Okay. So everybody is giving the right answer. Dr. Kiran has written option A. And Jani Bala, Dr. Jani Bala has written option C. And Dr. Sheila has also mentioned option C. Okay. So we wait for a few more answers. Dr. Zeba has written option A. Dr. Uh, 
Dr. Josna has also mentioned option A. Dr. Pratpal has written option D. Dr. Dilip has mentioned option D. Dr. Mayank has written option C. Okay. Dr. Bamini has written option A. So none of the option is left, it seems. <laughs> yes, doctor. Dr. Uma has written option B. Okay. Dr. Harisha Sundha has written option A. Okay. We wait for more answers. I think the maximum is for D and now it's A as well. But there are few, I think all the options are covered. Few have op uh, given option B. Dr. Saurav has written option B. Okay. So A and D being the maximum, there are few for B as well and one and two for C. So let me start explaining this one. In any uh, critically ill patient, uh, when you start for any insulin therapy, the ideal cutoff or the target blood glucose level should be less than 180 milligram per deciliter. So D is the right answer. But if in the same critically ill patient, you want to start insulin therapy, so once the insulin therapy is started, then the target blood glucose should range between 140 to 180 milligram per deciliter. But what about any non-critically ill patients or the critically ill patients who have been recovered? In such patients, we target for the blood glucose level uh, less than 140 when it is taken prior to the meals or fasting. And for post-meal, it is again the same. It must be less than 180 milligram per deciliter. 